Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time for our hot topic. And we'll be looking at the National Assembly passes 2024 budget raises estimates by 1.2 trillion naira. Now, there's been an appropriation bill which was um, about 27.5 billion trillion naira but now it's been increased to 28.7 trillion naira by the president but anyways joining us to speak about this and just give us more insight is frank Ilianya, who is a business who's at business day is the technological news editor at business day good morning frank thank you for joining the program good morning and thank you for having me happy new year happy thank new you. year to you happy new year Okay, so we're looking at an addition of 1.2 trillion naira to our appropriation budget. When you saw this, what was the first thing that jumped at you? And how did you feel about this? I mean, we're talking about 27.5, now we're moving over to 28.7. I think the first thing I did was try to find out uh, what the thoughts or the idea was from the, uh, from the National Assembly. Right. And uh, some of the reasons that they put forward, which uh, includes um, uh, um, increasing revenue and uh, um, all the three items, you know, um, it, they kind of didn't add up, you know, but uh, um, this has become like uh, something that you expect from the National Assembly every year that uh, the budget is made, you know, before they pass the budget, uh, they often come up with these um, additions that they um, put on the budget. Um, even if uh, they hadn't thought about how do we um, uh, um, show up or uh, um, account for these additions that we are making, but they just go ahead and make it anyway. So, um, so it is expected, so I wasn't really surprised that uh, uh, um, it is the case, um, again, this, uh, in, in this 2024 budget. But then it, it then raises um, critical questions, which um, I, I'm hoping that the government um, will answer in 2024. Listening to the president's uh, speech this morning, um, where he was saying that uh, he plans to um, pursue his uh, tax reform, and uh, also, and also um, tackle everything that uh, um, obstructs revenue generation. Um, it's sort of a bit hopeful, but then uh, um, there were some critical things I would have expected to hear from that budget, uh, from that uh, New Year Eve uh, message, which weren't there, you know. But um, it's 2024, so um, we can look forward to say there's something that might happen that would be that would be different from the disaster that we had in 2023. Mm. Okay, so some of the adjustments made included the foreign exchange differential. Um, we know what the FX is saying right now. The dollar is at an all-time high, if I can say that, as well as the pounds and the euros. So some of these adjustments that, is, that amounts to the 1.2 trillion is for, includes foreign exchange differential, increase in government-owned enterprises, revenues, personal reduction. What jumped out to me was the foreign, um, the foreign exchange differential. Are we not supposed to be looking at a way to um, bring down the foreign exchange? So to, you know, just put up the naira to the dollar. It might not be as it used to be like years before, but at least something close. But if we're still adjusting for this foreign exchange, what happens to our economy? We're adding more money, and guess what? Most of these monies that you know, are in our budget, we're probably going to borrow them. So we're borrowing to make all of this spending. How does that even work in our economy that we are currently in right now? Yeah, so I, I think what you're seeing there is uh, the, um, the National Assembly are adjusting for the worst in 2024. Mm. Um, they're, they're like just telling you that um, brace up, you know, tighten wow. your seatbelt, and uh, um, things might get a little bit more bumpy in, in, in 2024. Um, but then um, you're... You are correct about uh, you know asking the questions about how does this even work. Um, we are we are um, expecting that um, 
production levels or production activities in the economy um, in 2024 are going to be significantly increased or improved you know um, but I'm I'm still not very confident you know from the uh, from the government uh, position and their body language you know so it's still not given the kind of vibes that you you need to assure yourself that um, they are they've got their head in the right direction um, which was also why I alluded to the president's speech uh, um, this morning um, that speech uh, for me could have been a little bit more forceful about um, issues around the uh, cost of governance um around issues around how the government intends to work with the state because i think that um in 2024 the government should prioritize um the state governors um to ensure that they boost their revenue um I, i'm i'm kind of uh, um leaning towards the states to get or rescue the economy from from the place where it is currently you know, imagine if you have uh, 20 states that are productive. Imagine if you have 20 states that, are, that have significantly improved um, their revenue by December 2024. Um, the economy will, will, will be improved yeah. by that period. But in 2023, what you saw was that um, just a little about uh, um, four states were able to hit over 1 million over 100 million dollars in revenue you know so that is abysmal you know uh we even had uh, a kitty state with uh, about twelve thousand, uh, slightly above the twelve thousand dollars that it generated from foreign um uh, direct investment you know so it, it, it's it, it is it is a bad place where the states are but it is something that we should prioritize in 2024 you know, look a little bit uh, um, uh, away from the federal government. I don't see the federal government, you know, uh, um, uh, um, doing so much without the significant input of the state. Because um, things like pay, um, taxes, if, yeah. if you're going to talk about the taxes that the government is talking about, you know, pay is still with the state. Um, most of the taxes are, are coming from the state. When you talk about pay, you're talking about uh, um, employees of uh, companies, you know, what they earn and all of that. Um, how do you um, increase that tax net without improving um, employment? So if co if uh, companies are not employing, it means that uh, you have a less um, tax to collect from there, you know. Um, so you, you will need the states to be open doing. You will need every state to go back to their budget i saw that many of them um passed their budget before um december um 31st yeah. you know which is good but then it is not just about passing the budgets the content of the budgets are very important how much of it were located to education how much of it were located to um power how much of it were allocated to um road infrastructure you know and how less of them? No, how less were allocated to funding um, um, the the government themselves? You know, uh, um, some of them are very, very poor. You know, in terms of uh, the numbers, if you look at um, what they are allocating for themselves uh, in terms of how uh, um, um, funding their offices, you know, very very poor. As in, they increased this significantly while their education um, did not get as, as much. You know. Um, if we're going to move forward in 2024, then issues around human resource development has to be prioritized. Right. Issues around, that would mean improving the education system. I looked at the budget of, uh, of uh, the universities uh, currently, you know, if you, if you just oppose that with what the National Assembly allocated for itself, if you just oppose, if you just oppose that with what the federal government is going to use to run its uh, activities, you know, um, you know that we're not serious yet. And then, of course, um, how much attention are we giving to power? Power remains a critical issue in our country. In fact, right. many of us celebrated Christmas without uh, electricity in our homes. Mm -hmm. You know, 
and uh, just um, towards the last week of uh, of uh, December, we are beginning to hear that electricity tariffs will also be increased. You know, so if well, if the government intends to increase the pressures on the pockets of of Nigerians, the question will be what sacrifices is it willing to make? I was expecting that the president's uh, speech this morning was going to um, maybe say something about how much they're going to cut from uh, what they are currently spending on each minister, what they're currently spending on the travels that they have made and all of that. But it, it is not there. And then, of course, still talking about state, I'm looking at what is the government going to do about Abuja and uh, Lagos states. You know, these are two states that are very critical to the economy. You know, um, you're talking about Lagos, you're talking about um, the commercial nerve center of the economy. Then you're talking about Abuja, the power seat. You need, recently we have seen what's ha what, what has been happening in Abuja, kidnapping, insecurity um, at a very high rate. Investors are not going to look at that and come into the country. Um, no matter how much pledges they make, you know, um, in December we heard from the government that they have uh, um, they have accumulated about oh, about fifteen billion dollars in in pledges. Pledges do not um, translate to actual investment. They can make pledges to you, but if if you don't do the work, if you don't put in the uh, um, the investment within. Um, investors are not going to come in. So it's not, uh, um, all of this needs to be balanced in 2024. Um, we have in Abuja where um, you have an FCT minister who is more interested in politics than he's interested in the development of this uh, of the state. What is the, God, what is the president going to do about Wiki in 2024? Those are issues that needs to be addressed. If you don't address the development of Abuja, then every other state will suffer. You know, so all of those things is what we're expecting that uh, actual actions are taken um, in 2024 to improve the state of the economy. At the position where it is, um, it is abysmal. And the state needs to need to live up to expectation, really. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, this budget was raised based on assumptions uh, because the explanation that was given by the National Assembly is that the government-owned enterprises pledged, you just talked about pledge, that's what reminded me of this, uh, a pledge cannot translate into action. But government-owned enterprises pledged uh, that they were going to raise their revenue. And so they jacked up the, the budget just because of these pledges. In the first place, are we safe to make a presumptions or a presumptuous budget as it is? Because all these figures are based on projections that may or may not come to fruition? Um, you are very uh, anchored there. Um, when, when we talk about the pledges that the government agencies are, are making, I thought, I, I would have thought that the government would go back to anticipation, uh, um, to what has happened before. Um, if you look at the performance of the budget over the years, if we budgeted, let's let's assume we budgeted 100 naira for a year to to earn 100 naira in a year. The Nigerian government has never made 100 percent of that revenue projection. Mm. You know, there's never been a time when we exceeded or even attained the 100 percent at least for uh, for the period of this democracy uh, since since 1999 um, that we've had. You know. Um, it has always maybe stopped at uh, if you uh, um, if you were good enough, if the government was very active enough, they will make uh, say about uh, seventy percent of that of that revenue projection. You know, never been a time that we attained hundred percent. So yes, it begs the question: Why are you basing um, uh, um, increase in the budget on projections of agencies? Um, what reforms have those agencies put in place to ensure that the projections that they are making are attainable? Um, I, I don't think I've seen significant improvement in, in, in any of the agencies. Many of them are still run like the way the old civil service um, systems are, are, are being run. 
you know, um, there's, a, there's been a lot of talk around automation of uh, governance, the e-governance uh, projects that the government has been in, uh, or has embarked on for, for um, over eight years now, you know, but that has not been fulfilled. So if, if we have not been able to integrate every agency within, within an automated system, how do you then want to account for the leakages that will result from, uh, um, from continually using manual uh, um, techniques to earn revenue, you know? So uh, um, it is not going to work without technology. There's got to be a serious discussion within government itself, bringing everybody, every stakeholder um, across the agencies to say, look, we have to get serious. And um, if, if we're going to survive, it is going to be based on how much investment we make in technology. So um, we hear a lot from the new Minister of Communication, um, uh, Innovation and Digital Economy about how they're going to integrate um, uh, um, the, the, the whole MDAs, you know, and the other agencies and all that. But that hasn't started happening yet. Um, we, we haven't seen any action there. So I want to see some form of activity around investment in technology. You, you know, uh, um, let's, let's see how that is going to work and see um, how that will improve our revenue. Uh, um, but until we do that, I, uh, I don't think all these estimates that we keep projecting are going to work. And it's also the same thing when you hear the president say that uh, we're going to pull, pull 10 million people or 20 million people out of poverty. Question is, how do you want to do that? You don't have data. First of all, we don't have, we even have a population data uh, um, in Nigeria yet. Um, the last estimate, estimates that we are um, working with is the 2017 estimates from the MPC. You know, the MPC has not updated for 2018, 2019, 2020, up until 2023. So okay. if we don't even have that updated yet, what data is the government going to use to pull 20 million people or 40 million people out of poverty? Right. How do they describe poverty? You know, so those are questions, critical questions that need to be answered. He said something about uh, um, 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 leveraging data um, last year in December as well, that the economy is going to ride on or survive um, with the use of data. But how much, in, uh, how much investment are they making? Yeah. When are we going to have a population census? You know, our census, when are we going to have well, it? Maybe so soon. those are questions that need to be yeah, there, there really are very many questions that they <laughs> so many answer. Que I yes. even have a personal question. You don't have to answer this, but um, I'm a business person, and I believe that if you're budgeting a lot of money mm -hmm. to go in, then you should be looking for ways to get the money out. Mm -hmm. So you should be looking for ways to make sure that your business is thriving and is profitable, right? So I'm thinking we're talking about these numbers. How are we sure that we can actually make that money back? But sadly, we cannot continue this conversation <laughs> right now because we're a little bit out of time. But I think we're going to bring you back so we can, you know, take a deep dive into this conversation. But thank you so much for joining us and thank, thank you for bringing you. your valuable you, contributions. Ha to happy New Year, world. Frank. And Happy New Year once again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. All right. All right. Okay, we'll be speaking to Frank Elianya. Here's the technology and business news editor at Business Day. All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Well, we're going to be talking about the refinery, so you want to stick around for this one. See you soon.